After the explosion tonight, the federal investigation into a devastating and deadly blast that rocked a Hartford County community. Hello, everybody. I'm Nikki Zizaza. And I'm Denise Koch. Welcome to those of you watching on CBS News Baltimore and on WJZ TV. Well, today we learned the identities of the two people who lost their lives in the house explosion in Bel Air over the weekend. And at this hour, authorities are still searching for the cause. WJZ on your corner with live team coverage from the scene. Jessica Albert with the community impact. But we begin with investigator Mike Helgren and what may have sparked the blast. Mike. Nikki Denise, the state fire marshal's office tells us that there was some sort of gas leak on the outside of the home. That's the focus of their investigation. NTSB investigators have been here on the scene throughout the day looking into this, and we learned the victims include a BGE contractor and the homeowner here. It's unsettling, kind of bracing to realize that that's the only thing that remains of that house because it is completely destroyed. Nothing is left of the home on Arthur's Woods Drive in Bel Air that exploded Sunday morning. The blast shook homes blocks away, causing structural damage. That was something uh, decidedly different from anything I'd ever experienced. It was a blast that it was jarring. Uh, I mean, I was dead asleep. Chris Fields says his neighbor called BGE roughly 12 hours before the explosion to report smelling a strong gas odor. The fire marshal's office says BGE later dispatched contractors to examine an electrical problem. The blast occurred shortly after they arrived. I've never been more grateful to wake up to my family having all 10 fingers and toes. WJZ drone footage shows the immediate aftermath. Insulation and pieces of the home strewn about. Today, the National Transportation Safety Board arrived on the scene as part of an independent federal investigation. We always work with our federal partners on ed, NTSB for any type of gas uh, explosion. Uh, unbeknownst to a lot of people, the NTSB actually has jurisdiction over pipelines, gas pipelines. Oliver Alkire with the State Fire Marshal's Office says his team has collected all the evidence it needs from the scene. But we believe that there was actually no criminal activity involved. This is purely an accident and they're going to focus their investigation on all accidental causes. This all stems from a uh, electrical failure of some sort that BGE was notified on. They sent out their contractors out here to take a look at that, and unbeknownst to them at this point, that's where we're at our investigation, unbeknownst to them, they were not aware of this gas leak that was occurring uh, right outside the home. Authorities identify the deceased as 73-year-old homeowner Ray Corcoran Jr. and 35-year-old BGE contractor Jose Rodriguez Alvarado, whose work van remains at the blast site. My heart goes out to the friends and family of the two casualties, but if you see the wreckage, you will see that this could have been far worse. Cleanup is now underway, and several families have been displaced, including Fields, whose garage doors are warped from the explosion. We have a sign on our door um, telling us that, yes, this is uninhabitable until it is cleared by a structural engineer, and uh, so we've been staying at a local hotel. And so many cannot stay in their homes here tonight. Now, we're also learning from uh, fire investigators that the homeowner had placed the property on the market for sale the day of the blast. Our live team coverage continues with Jessica Albert and more on the community impact. Jessica. Mike, as you can imagine, community members here are trying to make sense of what has happened here. They're in shock about this explosion. They're searching for answers, but they're also remembering their fellow neighbor who passed away and the BGE worker who were killed in this explosion. You can see several community members are gathered here on the street. I'm told that an organization is bringing them dinner tonight so that they can share a meal together and remember their neighbor who died, 73-year-old Ray Corcoran Jr. Now, nearly every person I'm told in this community and the surrounding areas in this area are impacted by this explosion. Several of the homes in the neighborhood are damaged uh, and that includes as you can see busted out windows as Mike reported people's garages are warped lots of extensive damage to several of the homes here and I'm told that many people aren't able to stay in their homes tonight. Now many he here in the community they're just trying to clean up their properties right now and again just make sense of what happened here. We can 
see several restoration crews are on the ground here right now, and several people are boarding up the damage to their homes. I spoke with one neighbor who didn't want to go on camera, but she told me that Corcoran, the man who lived in this neighborhood who passed away, was an original owner of the house that he was living in here. She told me he's a father and he was well known in this neighborhood. I can tell you that the American Red Cross did just pull up on the scene here. I believe that's the organization that is providing dinner to the community members here tonight. I have reached out to the Red Cross to try to learn how many people they're assisting at this time who have been displaced or have had their homes or their belongings damaged. I'm waiting to get a response back, but we are going to stay on the ground here and we're going to talk to neighbors and try to learn more about how they're feeling and more about the people who lost their lives in this tragic explosion. But for now, we're reporting live in Bel Air South. Jessica Albert for WJZ. Thank you, Jessica and Mike.